through the human karyotyping gizmo if you want to watch. Um, so this is going to be our um, answer sheet. And it says to kind of have a little bit of background information on some of these terms. So I'm going to, <clears throat> I just want to show you these cute little babies, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about chromosomes and karyotypes before you get started. So you know what we're doing. Um, a karyotype is just a picture of the chromosomes that are arranged in pairs. So this is like a karyotype right here. These are real uh, pictures of chromosomes and normally they're not all lined up. So what, um, what scientists do is they take a picture and then they uh, cut them out and they line them up. And our chromosomes usually go in order of um, the longest to the shortest. And then, and then we have two at the end that are called our sex chromosomes. So these two, although they don't look exactly alike, they are both X chromosomes. And if you are a boy, it would be, it would look like this. And a big one and a small one, those are, that's the Y chromosome, an X and Y chromosome. So um, here we have an example. Um, <clears throat> this is an X chromosome, X chromosome, so that's a girl. This is an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So this would be a karyotype of a boy. Um, so we have 46, and the, the, um, first, the first 44, or the first 22 pairs, so this is one pair, two pair, three pair, all of these are called autosomes because they have um, genes that have to do with the body. And then these are considered our sex chromosomes. So these contain genes that relate to being female or being male. Um, so we have 23 pairs, 46 total. The first 44 are known as autosomes. And then the last two are sex chromosomes. So XY if you're male and XX if you're female. Um, you're going to have one um, patient or one subject that you're going to be looking at their karyotype that's going to have a disorder. But here are some common disorders that happen um, because of chromosome uh, abnormalities. So for example, in this one, this is a Down syndrome karyotype you'll notice you're supposed to have two of each chromosome. Um, one is from your mom and one is from your dad. And so everything should be two, two, two. But notice uh, number 21, which is supposed to be a pair, two tw 21s, actually has three. So this person got an extra chromosome, um, usually from the mom. And so that, uh, that causes the individual to have um, different symptoms and um, physical disabilities, physical and mental disabilities, and, and kind of similar traits, actually. And that's called Down syndrome. Um, you, we're going to go into uh, how that happens, but there are other disorders. So you could have an extra 21. You could have an extra X. So normally one parent gives you one sex chromosome, one gives them the other, but for some reason, one parent gave you two. Um, so that could be Klinefelter's. Turner syndrome is when you only have one sex chromosome. They call it super male if you have two Ys. And there are others. These are just four. Okay. And we're going to go into detail about um, how that happens for our meiosis lab. But um, basically, mom is supposed to um, give only half of her chromosomes. She's only supposed to give 23 or 23. But uh, in this situation, she her egg didn't divide correctly, and she gave 24. And so this one has an extra chromosome. Or if uh, if she gave an egg that has one less, then this one has 
one less chromosome. And it could happen with the, the dad too. So just interesting with Down syndrome, a mother's risk. Down syndrome is related to the age of the mother because as she gets older, her eggs don't divide accurately. They make more mistakes as they're dividing. So notice as the mother passes 35, 40, her risk of having a child with Down syndrome increases. Uh, one way that they can check the chromosome um, number of a baby, they can check the sex of the baby, but more, more uh, often they're doing it to check the, the chromosome count is through something called amniocentesis. So they, while the mother is pregnant, they can actually put a needle in and pull out some fluid because the baby's cells are also floating around in that fluid. And remember in every cell, you have all of your DNA, you have your 46 chromosomes. So they can do a karyotype of the baby's chromosomes and see whether there's any sort of abnormality. Okay, so that's your crash course on karyotyping. And this lab is going to, um, you're gonna do a karyotype. Fortunately, I found this gizmo lab because in class I have my students cut out chromosomes with paper and scissors and glue and and I was going to make you do it, but I won't. Okay, so right here um, you're going to be making karyotypes. It says for five individ individuals, but I'm going to have you do three because it gets a little tedious. Um, but you're going to look at the simulation pane, use the arrows to click through the numbers. So here's our simulation pane. And here it shows you, this is chromosome pair one, two, three, four, five. And notice, you're going to go to all 23 pairs. Look at what's happening to the size of these as we go. Um, higher in our chromosome pair count. So by 22, they're very small. And then now we're gonna hit the sex chromosome. So you've got, this is an X chromosome and this is a Y chromosome. So we can already tell that this subject is gonna have an X and a Y. So you should already know whether that's gonna be a boy or a girl. Okay. So you can answer those questions. And then this is how you make a karyotype on the gizmo. Um, you're gonna go ahead and make sure you've got subject A, and then you're gonna click and drag one of these chromosomes. And then you, you need to identify it. So you need to click through here until you find which one it matches. It's like a little matching game. And it tells you right here, this is chromosome four. So now I'm just gonna move this over and, and put it um, above chromosome four. Let me see what happens if I put it in the wrong one. Oh, I can't do that very well. All right, so let me drag, drag another one. Um, that looks a little bigger, so I'm gonna go up. And yep, that is number one. I'm gonna pretend to put it on number seven. Oh, okay. So uh, you're going to keep doing that. And you just don't want to get fooled by the X because the X is big, but it's not one of the numbered ones. So let's see. Mm -hmm. This might be the X because it's not matching any of them. Oh, yes. All right, so this is going to be an X. You get it? You're going to do that with all of these. And then um, you're going to click on the camera, which is right here, and that's going to take a snapshot. And you're going to label it. And you're going to paste the snapshot here. Okay. So you're going to, I'm, I'm not sure how it works because I really don't want to finish this. But I'm imagining it'll copy it and then you can just go ahead and right click and paste it once you finish. If that's not working for you, go ahead and just take a picture with your camera or screenshot it and you can submit it separately. 
Okay, so how many autosomes? Hopefully you know autosomes are going to be all of these up until the sex chromosomes. So it's not 22, but it's 22 pairs. Okay. Um, and then you're going to say whether it's male or female. Um, and then you're going to click on diagnosis. Okay. And I think it's going to tell you everything. It's not going to tell me now because I haven't finished the karyotype. But it's going to tell me it's male or female. And um, how do you know? It'll probably hopefully tell you. And then um, you're going to compare the X and Y on the simulation, which one has more DNA. Okay. Then you're going to do the same for subject B. Okay. So you're going to do A and B, and obviously one of them is going to be female. When you get to activity B, you're going to click on subject C. Okay. And this subject has a disorder. So you're going to do it again. And then you're going to click on diagnosis and you're going to figure out what um, what the diagnosis is for this, this karyotype. Do they have an extra 21? Do they have an extra X? Or do they only have one X? And then it should give you some symptoms, so you're going to go ahead and write that down. Okay, and then it talks about another one. I thought it asked you to do the other... E and F, but you do not have to do E and F, just do C, and then you can answer the rest of the questions, okay? So hopefully that, um, that explains how to do this lab, and uh, if you have any other questions, just go ahead and email me. Have fun.